probably not the most technical, but we try to take her slow. morning day three just woke up I'm still tired it's raining it's looking like it's another very overcast rainy rainy day today what, what can you do bound to get some sun one of these days so it's gonna have to push through today i don't know what's on the agenda today but i think we might have a couple portages and some more intense rapids I heard uh, an animal out here at like 3.30 this morning. I heard a, a noise, an animal walking out here. I think it was a moose, but it seemed to be like not far from my tent. already rained this morning when I was in my tent. I just uh, couldn't bring myself to dragging myself out into the driving rain. Today is going to be about trying to make some distance, but I think I also probably have at least one portage today. I left my stove out and it's all wet, so let's see how well it lights. Not too good. Concerning. Don't particularly feel like lighting a fire this morning. Oh no. No pressure. Oh, son of a <laughs> Dove is broken. Unbelievable. So my stove is definitely broken. I think it has something to do with this. For whatever reason, no pressure uh, comes out of it when I turn it on. And like, I can try to disassemble it, but I, you know, I don't know, I don't understand the inner workings of these things. And uh, I also um, don't have a ton of time. And if it's a broken part, well, there's not too many places to source it out here. This morning it was like, I left it outside and it rained on it so it was wet, which means like, uh, it, you know, it's harder to start because the gas that's coming out of the element won't light. But, um, you know, some paper garbage and lit that and I kind of dried it out and, and got it lit, but then it just died. And then after that, the, the limiter, which is, you know, what basically controls everything, just completely stopped working. So I'm gonna have to, tinker around with that so yeah the stove saves me a lot of time in the morning and i've already sucked up a ton of time trying to dick with this thing so just enraging but this is pretty much garbage to me right now so it looks like i'm gonna have to be lighting fires every morning to boil water this is all damp bit of sun. My uh, solar panels can't charge much when there's no sun. One of the things uh, my float plane pilot told me 
about the bonnet plume is that it's very rarely traveled and I don't know why it's just uh, for whatever reason um, maybe the challenge of the rapids and all that but uh, compared to the wind which is an easier uh, river in the Peel watershed it sees a lot less traffic and maybe it's just because it's you know people haven't heard of it people don't know about it so you know that means there's nobody on the river no other group behind me no other group ahead of me just me out here in the middle of nowhere which is kind of cool anyways yeah uh well i got the fire going and it got that water boiled so in the end i i tried messing with my stove probably for half an hour trying all kinds of different things and couldn't get it lit and that's kind of a bummer but you know there should be enough wood around here it's just going to take me a little extra time to get going in the mornings and i'll be able to do it without a stove so it is what it is it's just bad when it's really really wet and you need to find a standing dead and whittle out the middle under a tarp it can take a lot longer anyways yeah i'm gonna get uh, some coffee going here and um get some oatmeal in me and before long we'll be on the river get smoked out Nothing like a hot cup of coffee to help you procrastinate on the morning. Some people ask, oh, do you bring a book to, do you bring a book to read? I did bring one on uh, gold prospecting on how to uh, pan for gold and stuff like that. I haven't even cracked it. Basically, I have no time um, between all the camp tasks, making, breaking camp, cooking, filming everything and traveling that uh, it's almost no point in even bringing one. The only time it's good is if you get weathered in for a few days. One, uh, two short portages today. And it's not gonna be the portage that's challenging. It's hard to just get my boat perfectly loaded so that I can have that solar panel on top with the solar battery underneath it. So I really gotta do kind of a Tetris maneuvering job of my bag. So to load and unload the boat is like more time consuming than the portage itself probably, but it is what it is. Well, I've managed to pack my load all fairly low, which gives you know the canoe better center of gravity and leave room for my legs, but the bow is quite heavy, which means I'm trimmed nicely, but it also means my bow is gonna go right through waves and I'll take in more water, but you're better to have that than to be trimmed really stern heavy for maneuvering. So all packed up now, but I haven't panned the mouth of this creek or up it a little bit so I'm just gonna take a couple minutes and head up there and see if I can find some gold nuggets the last creek that I tried the, the one that I paddled down I tried at the mouth and I saw what looked like almost like gold dust in there but as it kept swirling and swirling that kind of flew out with the water and didn't stay in the pan which means that good chance it's not gold because there's other granules of sand in the pan 
that were clearly heavier than it and gold should be heavier than any of the other stuff so really what you're doing is you're just kind of shaking the pan you're spinning it around you're trying to get the heavier pebbles and bits of sand and all that kind of stuff to float to the bottom and then keep panning and you're essentially splashing that out moving the rocks up and what's left should be the heaviest which is gold. I just can't imagine how cool it will be just swirling everything around and then little nuggets of gold uh, in my pan. It'll be super exciting. So yeah, I'm gonna go and um, uh, do that for a minute and then jump in the canoe and get going. Well, Gave it a good, uh, good go here for about an hour and walked up this creek. Uh, no luck, nothing that even remotely resembled gold that got me excited. There are some kind of like yellow colored rocks, but at first glance you can get excited, but then you realize it's just a rock. So yeah, nothing, nothing here, but I guess I just gotta stay positive. Um, good news is the sun's out and there was supposed to be 90% chance of rain, dumping rain all day as, uh, is what I understood, but it probably still will, but it's nice to have a little bit of sun. So anyways, time to get on the river. By getting left is a bit of a blind corner and eddy out and see down because I see some uh, rapidy stuff but it looks like just a little riffle where the current builds along the uh, wide side of the turn and it's not a big deal. Got a bit of a headwind blowing up here. Oh no there's a rapid there. There's a rapid. Yeah and there's a contour line that crosses the river. There's no rapids marked and you can't really rely on just uh, government topo maps to mark where all the rapids are. Um, none were marked in that canyon I just ran yesterday for example. They do mark uh, contour lines that cross the river and you can count miles or kilometers in between those contour lines and each map will tell you um, what one contour line is worth, how many feet it is. On some maps it'll be 10, on some it'll be much more. So. Um, then you can divide those two together and get a feel for the average drop of the river and the steeper the drop uh, The more wild the river is going to be but you really don't need much of a drop to get water moving pretty quick Anyways, I'm gonna jump out throw my dry suit on we're gonna give her Well And pack the uh, canoe as well today and uh, it Means my camera case is uh, Getting in the way making things more challenging for me to kneel quickly. Sometimes where the river turns like this, you get some standing waves along the outside edge, which can be easily avoided. Already starting to get into some more kind of denser forest just from the little bit that we've come down in that elevation now. A tight corner coming up here. Just using a back paddling and uh, using the angle of my canoe to travel sideways. When you have to turn in canoeing, you really have to turn twice because you have to turn and then turn like this. So back is a good thing to know how to do. And I do that when I come up to a blind corner just to open up the angle. If I see something sketchy, I jump in an eddy like that. You can see patches of ice still up in the mountains that are still feeding these uh, small little runoff creeks. This is looking kind of sketchy up ahead. I got pushed into a narrow braid and there's a tree down over the river and literally nothing I can do here to eddy out and miss it. So looks like maybe if I just squeeze left, I'll be able to get under the tip, but this is the kind of thing that can really cause problems. 
Yeah, it looks like I can get through without busting my face through branches. Woo! Sketchy, man. Always a good idea to slow down by back paddling. Buy yourself a little more time, but sometimes there's just nowhere to eddy out or anything. Yeah, my guess is that uh, some of the rapids down river that are usually runnable are going to be like raging torrents that will need to be portaged. I'm just hoping I have enough time to get over to shore. Things are going pretty good, just hanging out watching uh, bald eagle here. There's actually two of them, um, an immature one and a really large mature one. Coming through some braids, super hard to figure out and follow where I am on the map through here. Uh, but I think I'm off my first map, so I just pulled over to switch the maps over, which is which means I'm making it somewhere. Actually, I took a channel in between two islands. It was really the only one that looked inviting, looked perfect, and I got in there water was super pushy and there was a tree down across the whole thing fortunately it could squeak by right at the end without having to crash through branches because it was high enough to let the canoe under but big strong branches all along the bottom and kind of just a small area to get through so that was a little scary anyways uh yeah i have rapids coming up might not be for a bit but um, it'll sure be interesting to see what they're like if they're all portages can i run one can i run all of them can i do i portage all of them so We'll have to wait till we get there to find out. Oh, of course now it starts dumping rain when I'm trying to swap out my maps. I still don't put all my eggs in one basket even using this. This does rip or it leaks or uh, gets a hole punched in it. Um, and the other ones are in another bag somewhere. I don't even know where the heck we are. I'm guessing. Oh, we're probably getting pretty close to the rapids. So I flipped my map over because I was pretty sure, even though I was kind of unsure where it was, I was pretty sure I was getting onto the other map. And it turns out I was exactly right. I just flipped on my GPS because coming through these braids, it was really tough to navigate. Um, so my GPS shows me my exact location and it is right here so right on the next map so nailed it got a ways to go before the rapids yet but rapids there two rapids here contour line crosses the river and then another double bar rapid there so things are about to get interesting ladies and gents just dodge that wide channel there with all those sweepers right along it and swift current. A little rapid right here. Wow, what a view of the mountains. Sweeper coming up here. Looks like there's enough room to get by here. Nice black sand there. A couple of little rapids in here just because of the high water. Another little class one here. If I'd gone down there, I probably would have wound up in big trouble. It's impassable logs over it with ripping current and nowhere to get out. And then there's a strong headwind right now, unfortunately. Yeah, seriously challenging S bend here. Oh, rock. Uh, oh, I have to split these two. some serious rapids coming up in six kilometers and I really just got to keep my eye on the map 
so I can judge the character of the river as I get close. Just basically got to see where I am so I know when I'm getting close to them. I want plenty of time to take out and if the river's really pushy leading up to them it could cause some issues. This river is a very uh, seldom traveled river. Apparently the charter company doesn't have anybody else booked for a flight into here this year. So I might be the only one paddling it. There's no other group behind me. Um, it's obviously super remote so uh, I've got to take this pretty seriously. Wow, what do we have here? A very nice tributary. It's just screaming to take a couple of casts. Well, no luck here. I just eddied out uh, right at the mouth of a crystal clear tributary um, rushing right into the Hess River. Not there's a little tributary marked on my map that looks like it's marked coming in from a swamp so I was not expecting it to be this fast flowing and a beautiful eddy here. I love how you can see the two waters, the kind of turbid water of the bonnet plume mixed with the crystal clear emerald colored water of the tributary. It's so neat. That was a cool and pleasant surprise. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Honestly, I wish I'd camped here last night, but it was just a little too far. Another 20 clicks down river anyways. No, we have a little uh, class one coming up right here. Interesting. Oh, that is a rapid right there. I gotta scout that out. Well, it was gonna rain all day today. It dumped rain this morning, but uh, it's let up. And I just rounded a corner and saw this flushing rapid with some big standing waves looks like uh you know it's a kind of rapid where you take in a lot of water looks like maybe one hole to avoid and a bunch of big standing waves so i had to pull over quick crazy and it just uh, keeps going around the corner but it looks like maybe it'll be like a class two with my heavy load i definitely take in so i'll probably have to bail but i shouldn't take in too much water i don't think i'm still gonna walk down and check it out a little more though Oh, class three, a big wave there, a little irregular. Well, I'm gonna run it, hit the first big wave, then get right hard and eddy out and then scout what's down river. Whew, terrified though, it's the biggest standing wave yet, probably not the most technical, but I'm gonna try to take her slow. that that rapid terrified me it wasn't because of the rapid but it's because of what's down river we're in a little small canyon more standing waves super pushy and then a tight blind corner with a huge boulder in the middle and so if i missed this eddy i would have been swept down there and who knows what would have been around the next corner so that's uh what got my heart pumping a little bit in the end turned out to be easier than expected but uh yeah when you're all alone out here in the middle of the yukon it really amps things up if you know what I mean. This isn't even a marked rapid on the map and I guess just because of the high water it's making what would be 
you know, something manageable into something that isn't, long story short. There's a huge drop there. And if you hit it left, you go into a hole. You can't hit it right. So the tongue is completely blocked by this curling wave. I might be able to kind of cheat it and sneak up through here though. I'm gonna go scout down a bit further. And I don't know what the going on down there. That looks pretty interesting too. I can tell there's a very, very tight tongue. But the problem is right up river from that tongue is this boulder. You can't go left of it and right of it would mean it'd be almost impossible to back ferry across that ripping current to hit the tongue. So that's definitely a no-go. If you could hit the tongue, you could probably make it some real interesting boiling current down there though. But it's looking like I can probably run it right in between there, that kind of half submerged boulder and this huge boulder on the shore. And then run it right along here, through there, get hung up on those rocks. And then I don't know what this current's doing, but then bomb through the end there. So this would be a challenging portage. Look at this. Yeah, too bad. If the water is just a bit lower, I could hit that big boulder on the left and just nail the tongue but even then i guess it's still pretty sketchy and i'm out here alone good news is i don't have to be carrying endlessly we'll see i might have to portage just a little bit at the end but i think i'll probably be able to run that lower stretch so anyways back to the canoe okay well we're going to try to get through this sneak route i found there's also looks like another rapid around the corner too anyways here we go we'll stay right this shouldn't be too exciting Terrifying. idea there'd even be rapids through this section none of these are marked so I just I have a loose trip report but I don't know you know uh, where they are I know where they are in the marked rapids but I don't even know if they mention this it's tough to know where they are in the river so crazy really got to take things as they come sneak route it looks simple enough but uh, the consequences of missing it were large and the little V and the tongue beside that huge boulder that I had to hit wasn't the easiest but I nailed it it's too bad that I couldn't uh, have run this one because it would have been fun but it's really just this ledge that was the issue but I just couldn't line up with the tongue See, there's the tongue the only way to get to it is through here and it's just all boulders otherwise you have to be there there's no way you can get over and then this is some really challenging current here too but i probably just beast through that there's probably some more fun stuff around the corner too Scouting. 
getting sick of it. Well, that was a fun little ending to that one though. Dumping rain. Last thing we need is for this river to get any higher. Got another one here. I got to go scout. Blind corner looks technical. Class five, probably. It's got to be a trail though. There's a big eddy to catch. I'm going to run the first one. Eddy out left and then carry. I bet there'll be some resemblance of a trail and the bush doesn't look too thick. So I'm going to get this over with. Oh, nice not to get in in the middle of a raging torrent for once. I have a long semi-technical rapid to run. Uh, and then I have to eddy out before what looks like a class five raging frothing holes, tight pinch, guaranteed death if I go over that. But I should have plenty of time and it's nice big forgiving eddy there at the end. So I'm gonna go for it. battling full speed when I had to and then slowing down but I had to uh, split two boulders there like this so I had to come in like this and get through them like that anyways the portage starts like right over here yeah got another bar seems to be working a little now though the little bit of sun we did have <laughs> Hey bear! Hey! Hey bear! This is a long portage! This canyon just keeps going! Beautiful canyon it skirts but it's just full of rapids and then after you portage the first one, after you're past the first one, there's no way to put in anyways, even if you could run them. Some crowberries. It'd be nice to see some blueberries. What goes up must come down. Spinning wheel, got to go round. Do -do -do -do. Trail keeps going, but there's a little side kind of trail. Might be an animal trail here that leads down there. And I'm gonna go for it, damn it. Well, this is awesome. The weather was really beautiful, and then some dark clouds rolled in. It got cold, windy, poured rain, and that's blown through, leaving a spectacular rainbow. And I even see some double rainbow action starting to happen over here super awesome so i still have the boat to carry all the way to the end of what's probably about a kilometer kilometer and uh we'll, we'll call it 1300 meter long portage around a canyon and i'm using this rainbow as an awesome excuse to procrastinate from hauling the canoe there i'm long gone for the yukon those northern lights i want to see I'm long gone for the Yukon boys Cause the Yukon is calling for me These northern lights I wanna see I'm gone, gone for the Yukon boys oh. Oh. Already All right, baby. That part
of a tricky. I like to carry the canoe last on places where the trail's hard to follow because that way I learn the trail a bit better before taking the canoe. too crazy I mean there's a couple spots where I felt like I could potentially like have a good slip tumble down a hill and just plummet onto jagged rocks and my unconscious or deceased corpse would then just wash down the rapids but uh, there's only about two places like that and it's pretty open and there is a trail like it's definitely not a well used trail but I wonder if this trail is used since float planes were a thing and people started doing this river recreationally or if this is a, a trail that's been here for many 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 more years most of the time the portage trails have been here for thousands of years even and I wouldn't doubt if that was the case with this one too I was not expecting this portage to be anything like this oh would you look at that I'm here gear back in the boat, head on down river, and uh, look for a place to camp. Uh, once that sun uh, goes down past the mountains, start losing a lot of light and it gets cool quick. Well, that took a very long time. It is now 10 o'clock at night, or 9.55 to be exact, which is just blowing me away. I have no idea where the day went. And again, I haven't made my daily distance, which sucks, but it also means that this big portage is behind me, so I should be able to make better time the next coming days. does the temp ever drop when the sun goes behind the mountains so I can just feel it my hands are freezing well hopefully this uh, canyon ends soon so I can find a freaking place to camp boulder strewn rapid there. Lots of really fun rapids. I'll tell you that much right now. Let me check it out, see if I can camp here. It doesn't look too good though. Well, raging class three. Over a hundred meters long and there's still rapids around the corner. And you know what? I am behind schedule because, um, you know, really just the amount of uh, scouting you know, stopping, pulling over. I'm running everything I can, even pushing it a little, little more than I should be with what I'm running uh, and not scouting. But uh, when you're in a canoe, like in a blow up raft, it's a little different, but when you're all alone in a canoe out here, it's scouting is super important. And it also means that 
uh, even if you don't dump that your run's going to be a lot less terrifying and a lot smoother because you go you look at the rapid you say i'm going to go this way that way this way you're less likely to smash into rocks damage your canoe even if you don't dump and uh and just nail a good run and go in with a plan the point is that in the north it's not time that dictates your travel schedule it's safety and the weather so yep gonna get the boat unloaded and uh get set up try to get to bed relatively early maybe i'll just do uh some dehydrated meals tori um made some delicious uh, dehydrated meals for me so i might hammer one of those Also, the start of a very faint portage trail could be just a game trail coming down so if I was going to portage this I might just start from here rather than loading the boat and floating my gear all of a hundred feet but I think I'm gonna be able to run it I, I don't know what's around the next bend that's one of the things that's so challenging and dangerous about this river it isn't so much the rapids themselves it's just the ripping fast current in between the rapids and how many rapids there are back to back with boulders and everything so if you dump in a rapid so what it might be fairly easy but accidents happen well if you do there's a good chance it's game over you lose your canoe of pins or it's a panic situation you find it miles down river in an eddy so that's that's what's really dangerous because as soon as you tip in this man that current's just going to take your canoe just found um, the remains of a caribou antler. It's almost like rotted into the ground, but kind of cool. I was just walking, looking for where I was going to put my fire and looking for some wood and I just saw it there. Look at the girth of that. Hugely thick mountain caribou antler. Set plan for moi. Fun, darn it. These are still alive. There are tons of trees, but I just don't see a standing dead one. There's one over there, but that's way too far. Well, maybe I'll go get it anyways. Bone dry, standing dead wood, baby. Well, it's so cold out right now that the water in the river is steaming. That means that the uh, water is warmer than the air and the water's freezing. Not what uh, most people's July 22nd look like, but here in the northern Yukon, that's just how she goes. This aggressive Sydney Rancher blade by Agawa Canyon just lasers through the wood. bag was full of water. Tori's dehydrated meals.
Add in some cranberries. Just like Thanksgiving. Mmm, smells like turkey dinner. Basically all the things, stuffing, mashed potatoes, turkey, and cranberries, all dehydrated and mixed together. Let that sit and rehydrate. Hey bear, how are you? Come over for a bite, Barry bear. Just like to say that once in a while in case the bear's hungry and wanted to join me. I think there's supposed to be like two or three meals in that dehydrated pouch because my pot is full. Thank you, honey, for making this delicious food. I don't know how far I made it. I don't know, maybe about 25 kilometers. Again, not what I was supposed to make. So I'm hoping the lower stretch of the river widens up, there's not as many rapids, no portaging, and I can make good time. One rapid I managed to kind of uh, float down a side channel and uh, drag over some rocks and run the end. Not long after that, I had a long, challenging class two technical, and then, I don't know, probably about a 1600 meter portage with three trips. Really cool, really beautiful canyon. And I uh, jumped in the boat and I told myself, okay, I'll take the next campsite, sure, sure enough, rapid after rapid after rapid and then finally I saw what looked like a flat spot up here and I looked up what looked like a challenging rapid down river so I figured I'd pull over scout out fortunately there's a site here I walked down had a look at that rapid it's a raging class three looks challenging there's some irregular waves large waves and then disappears around the corner so hopefully I can run it either way it's going to be terrifying but uh, I'm going to take a big trek down there tomorrow and look what's around that corner and if it's nothing serious I might try running it but if it's a challenging rapid and then a waterfall around the corner you dump in that upriver rapid I mean your canoe is going to be smashed into sm into smithereens so I'm uh, happy to line it or portage it if I have to anyways I'm gonna let this sweater dry out a bit more by the fire today was day three so looking forward to seeing what tomorrow has to hold.